Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode where we're going to have a look at the white spruce. It's uh, one of the most common, I guess the big four common trees in the southern Alberta foothills. And here we are looking at the upper reaches of a mature white spruce. And as we kind of get closer to it, you'll see that it's quite a large um, tree. And just want to get some close-ups of the bark just to help identify it. You can see that this is a uh, very scaly bark. Some other features you're going to notice here are some of the buttressed roots on this mature tree. And we have a lot of lichen growth, which is quite fascinating. And here's actually a great example of the difference between a spruce cone right here and the lodgepole pine cone. So this tree is growing in a bit of an open forest area next to lodgepole pine and aspen. And we'll take a look at the needles here. You can see they're short and four-sided, so it, they roll. You can see they roll in your hand. So that's one way of identifying a spruce, is the short, sharp, prickly kind of needles that you can actually roll in your hand. Fur, which are a little less common in this area, have flat and softer and a little longer needles and I'm going to show another example of a couple more mature uh, white spruce that are beside each other so we'll head over that way now here is another example of a couple more mature white spruce growing quite close to each other these are somewhere in the range maybe 28 to 30 inches in diameter and the last tree that we saw was just over 30, I believe. So these are very large trees, mature trees. I'm guessing 100 years old or so, just from ones that I've counted the rings on. But uh, this, this is kind of the backbone of the Alberta foothills boreal forest, along with the lodgepole pine, which we'll take a look at next. But uh, there's a lot of seeds and things scattered on the forest floor below from the squirrels and everything else. So they're real big contributors to the rest of the ecosystem. And you can see on the branch scars, plenty of sap to help keep the pathogens away. And yeah, just a great example of a large mature white spruce. And we're going to have a look at, uh, there's a large dead spruce just around the corner here. We'll have a look at what's going on with that. So we'll be right over there. Okay, here's an example of a mature white spruce that is no longer alive. And it's hard to say what the cause was. However, you can see there's a very large crack that was, I guess, healing, but hasn't or didn't. And we're also able to see a lot of insect activity in the tree. So this tree, after it's died, is now the habitat for quite a few insects and and other things and we're going to see how long this one lasts before it finally goes over um, this is this is quite a tall tree i'll actually have to get a measurement on that uh, in a later episode but uh, it's eventually it'll drop into the forest behind it and we'll get to see what kind of 
what happens then? There's, there'll be a lot of fungus growth and all these types of things that grow on it. And this tree would take many, many decades to completely rot away. So we'll be able to kind of have a look at that process and see what, what it means. And uh, this tree is actually growing next to a temporary, well, I guess a intermittent stream. And we have some poplar, balsam poplar beside it, and aspen. And actually some, some alder as well. So, and cow parsnip is growing in front. So anyway, very, very important tree to this area. And there'll be a little more detailed episodes on this, on this particular tree coming up. Um, I'm going to have a look at where some large specimens are. There's some, you know, some of the old growth areas where they're actually quite spectacular. So thank you and we'll see you again soon.